Christina Martinez. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. Thank you. John Spencer. Hi. Welcome. Hi, hey, thanks. It's so exciting to have both of you here. It's, it's exciting to be here. <laughs> and you were stuck out there. I, why do I cats. have to spit guard? We tried. Okay. No, this Hold is, on a second. Really Wait a minute. Yeah. yeah, he spits much more than I do. Do you want to switch chairs? No, it's fine. No, that's, no, you that's got the good right. chair. I just yes. like to get really close to the mic there. That is some great mic technique, which mm-hmm. I'll tell you, most people come in here and they sit so far away from the mic. They sit back, sit. relax. You've got to get up here and swallow the mic. It's the unfortunate yeah. part of it. I'm up here. I live with this thing pressed against my face. Half the time. It's like an uncomfortable pillow that I just <laughs> smash my face into this windscreen. <laughs> and I can hide behind it a little bit, too, and not look at people. In my well, little... I get the screen. I get the teleprompter, which is good. You get the screen that has... Photos of you. Photos of me, scroll. What That's a treat. so great. Is. Oh, what a... That's nice. Lucky you. You drew the... Wait, oh, what are you doing? Oh, oh. that... Jeez. Don't worry. If you missed it, it's coming back. It will... <laughs> there's, I think there's only four pictures on it. Wait, do you have it, some e-cig legs in this oh, photo? Oh, no, that was... That guy <laughs> has called for years. And, I love it. And it's his own <laughs> private joke that he has taken public. You have to applaud the tenacity. Oh, I love Just, it. Just come yeah. on. Oh. That's amazing. He calls and he just... He thinks it's he funny. Baits you. Yeah. He's and killing himself, right? He's right now he's doing a dance. <laughs> I picture he's in like a basement apartment. I dare him to call back. Oh. But look, the dare the the gauntlet has been thrown down, E Sigs for a leg guy. Talk to me. Do you have the guts to call up Boss Hog? And say you're dumb, e cigs. You're gonna ask a question about. Let's see if I can catch you. Yeah, well, I, bet, I, I bet you could, could. But do you not recognize his voice? You really fall for it every oh, time. Every time, because he sucker. He well, he he. First of all, his voice is the most generic voice going. He wait, and he also waits a long time between calls, <laughs> so I forget. Well, Chris, also, he's talented. Well, you got some experience with phone work and and <clears throat> getting people to ar- arrive at a certain destination in a, a certain amount of time. So, little known fact, I did phone sex for a while. So what? maybe if the ESA <laughs> guy calls in, you well, never know person, if I'm telling the truth know. or not. You could so look, first. Let's figure finish up the ESA guy. You could give him some. Maybe you launch him down a new career path. True. He'll be yeah. E-cigs. I'm sure that there's some e-cig leg fetishist out yes. there. Yes. Let me. Yeah. What are you wearing? He'll say, "Well, <laughs> describe yourself." <laughs> well, I have e-cigs for legs. Um. So when? Well, was it was that? good that he called tonight when you were talking about. Well, I guess he did frame it in, in that way, right? No, he wound me up. He, he set it up perfectly. <laughs> he calls. And he and he he positions himself as if he's my dream caller. Where exactly. He, I actually have a question yeah. about your vape. Yes. He says literally everything I want a caller to do, and it's a lie. It's just all a lie. And it's ah, oh, that's just life. Isn't so, it? when were you a caller for uh, that kind of line of work? <clears throat> a, call, a caller. caller. A caller. Yeah, You're was, not a caller. It wasn't no, a job. It was, a it was more like a <laughs> you pastime. You sure. know. Well, well you done. We've all we've all <laughs> face. Yes. Uh, <clears> Mike's doing see. it right now. Right, Mike's uh, on hold right now out there for his own call. When would that have been? Um, in your life? When we first moved to the city and um, just lived in a series of sublets for a couple weeks at a time. And after we had sold John's banjo and all of my estate sale fur coats. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I, and we were still looking for jobs in The Voice, RIP. Mm hmm. Yes. And looking for apartments in The Voice. Before the internets, um, uh, there was a uh, an ad for a receptionist at a, and I can't remember how they phrased it, but it wasn't obvious what yes. it was. So I went to. It uh, never is with right. things. No, no, like there's, that. there's no. no indication about it. You massage anywhere. parlor. <laughs> yes. Massage so. parlor. Yes. So I was the receptionist. Okay. So I would. I would. No, but wait. Uh, it, okay. it doesn't end there. Uh-huh. So I, I did this. It was all a room, pretty much like this man cave here, mm-hmm. but full of ladies. Sure. And, uh, you know, we 
this is not the most <laughs> macho place you're making. It no, seem like I'm not. I'm not. It's have, the cleanest man cave. Look, there's I've a David Fair. Pic- that's probably the most macho thing in here. And not a a one Fair naked painting. lady anywhere. No, and there's a thing from the bootleg album. I on know. The wall. You're all very nice, My gentlemen. Friend Jeff Fierzig gave me that. The guy who directed the Daniel Johnston movie. Huh. And the uh, the the J T Leroy movie last year, which was a great movie. Didn't see it. It's such a. But good I heard movie. it was very good. It was really good. He brought that by. Hmm. Not saying everybody. You brought gifts also. Not saying it's a requirement. <laughs> gifts, which gifts. I believe were turned, <laughs> like given back. No, because right? I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be like, ooh, I'll take another copy of the new album, and then so, like I'll pretend I don't have it. Like, <laughs> well, cause it's also a trap, then, because then I'm just like. Oh, I don't have this. Like, well, you didn't get it yet. You had yeah, you haven't heard eight it? months to get it. And then I'm just like, you oh, research. I guess I'll get it. I waited for a free one. That's what I would do. And when I say the new album, I mean Brood X, <laughs> which is, look, there's certain things I'll lay and wait <laughs> for the free one to come my way. All right, wait. So We've we all have done it. Brood Stars out there. I don't know if you have that, but that was the, the pre release EP where we did some, you know, a little bit. Uh, they're, they're kind of remixed songs. Okay. And has two songs that we play out live and two that we're going to play out f- first time ever um you're doing a couple shows this week. yeah on yeah. on friday night at skirball and possibly at asbury park as well friday night at the skirball center at nyu with yeah. the joshua light show thank you john and then saturday asbury park the 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 scene bruce springsteen will finally be erased from the history books. The new boss in town. Exactly. A new boss That's is in right. town. That's right. Like a boss. Boss Hog are playing at? The Wonder Bar. The Wonder Bar with Sunshine in the Rain. Yes. And Taiwan Housing Project. Who are also great. That's three great bands. What else are you going to do? One low right. price. One low price. And it's Oyster Festival weekend there. And it's Oyster Festival. What more do you dirtbags want? <laughs> Some rosé, damn it. Yeah. And so, so that's this look. If you're in this area and you don't go see Boss Hog at one of the two shows, I don't know what to say to you because it's it's also not like you guys are always out and about doing it. It's it's you're here. You should see it while it's here because because how long was it? Was it like 16 years between uh, since uh, the for the was it Whiteout was like 2000 probably? Yes. Okay, and then. And that's, a, that's, so you don't know when it's coming back, because there was like a long, <laughs> don't that's miss right. it. You know, it could be 2032 could. before. True. No, it won't be that long. Will it? I no? hope not, no. We're, did, we're writing again now. So. Did you miss it for that whole long time? Because let me say, first of all, this is Boss Hog. It's a great band. <laughs> you moved to New York. Cause look, there's a lot of 20-year-olds listening to this show. Okay. They don't know what's going on. Just it's like Twenty One Pilots, guys. It's like that band, oh, Twenty One yeah. Pilots. Except I've heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, Boss Hog. So you guys moved to New York. I was nineteen. You were nineteen. John Pussy was Galore is. 21. You're a couple years into Pussy Galore now, probably right when you About moved to one, New York. Uh, one. Maybe not even one. Okay. Well, yeah. So you moved from D.C. Yeah. To New York. Neil stayed behind. So. Yeah, initially Neil Haggerty didn't come with us, and mm-hmm. so, uh, That's wh- so why Christina was... was drafted to to uh, help uh, fill out the sound, the and, Pussy Galore and sound. You, you were in for how long were you in the band? Until I got kicked out. <laughs> Until you got kicked out. <laughs> when Neil moved up. Okay. So. Oh, but there was a period. Oh, where there was there a little was a, bit of time. We were That's a five-piece, yeah. We did the Pussy Gold 5000 true. record mm-hmm. released by by our records. Yes, New from, Jersey. Yes. From, from one of the oranges, probably, I think, right? Uh, Maybe uh, West Orange or Clementine. something. But, so yes, yeah, so that got you up to this area. Then you get the boot, the pink slip. That's right. You get S-can. The only time I've ever been fired from anything <laughs> from in anything my life. Was a band <laughs> that your husband That's right. was the lead singer of. <laughs> it's the only time you ever lost a job. <laughs> it's true. So you get... So then you say, I'm going to show everybody. Wait till you see this band, Boss Hog. Uh, there was a little bit. In, in between, I was in the Honeymoon Killers. Okay, that's so right. So I was in the Honeymoon Killers for a bit and then um, decided I wanted to do my own thing, but didn't know anybody but John. <laughs> so, 
Oh, you. you so it's uh-huh. like, you have to be in my band then. <laughs> so that's how that started. So you put this band, because initially it was like an all-star lineup. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, also Jerry Teal from the Honeymoon Killers. Bob mm-hmm. Burt, who played with us, was in it. Charlie Andres. Yes, the late, um, great Charlie Andres. The late, great Charlie Andres. Who was um, such a great drummer. An amazing guess. drummer. A great person. Uh, funny, smart, unfortunately, died Kurt, too, far too young. Yeah. Also Kurt Wolf Kurt from Wolf, uh, right. Pussy Galore. Was, uh, in, so was, all the people that I, you know. So, I, I just knew a few people. Yeah. <laughs> so people was, just sort of pulled them in, and it was a studio kind the, of thing. The all stars happened. because everybody else was in other bands. Sure. Yeah. So when did it become its own? When did when did it become a thing where it's like this is its own thing? This is not this is not a place for people to come slumming and hang out and then go back to their nice. Because look, that's what it feels like for me in my whole life. <laughs> I feel like this this is I do a thing and everybody hangs out and then they go back to their nice place. <laughs> After a while, they're just like, "Oh, it was fun hanging out with you for a little bit." We're going back to our nice neighborhood now, <laughs> with all the other actual respectable people. And I'm with. And look, I'm not going to put these guys out there down, but it's like the bad news bears here, <laughs> right? But we get it done. Thin door we get it between done. us. Lock the door now. Yeah, we got <laughs> the, the the kid on the dirt bike. What was his name again? Jackie Earl Haley. <laughs> I'm not sure which one of them is Jackie Earl Haley, but it, at some point, Boss Hog, you go from yeah. This... I don't. I can't remember why we did that. Did what? Do you like did be started playing out more? I think. I, I guess we must have been invited. Yeah, I think we were always keen to play, and yeah, um, we enjoy playing live. So I think it was probably just you know more and more invitation to do so, and then when Charlie passed, uh, then that was well. That's a of... big leap there, right? Well. A couple of years. And then, yes, when Charlie died, we uh, thought we wanted to keep playing and so recruited Jens's girlfriend to play <laughs> drums at the time. So we were like um, uh, Fleetwood Mac. What other bands had two? ABBA. You know, two, the, yeah, two, two couples. couples. Yeah. Yes. So you um, had Fleet, yes. uh, Fleetwood Mac. ABBA. ABBA had. Um, who else? Any? Can you think of others? Think, and I think that might be it. The no. third band. Come on. The third the band. Beatles? It's a trend. <laughs> the Beatles. I don't the know. The Bee Gees? The Bee Gees. Well, that would be <laughs> Wait, weird. The whole surfers? Thru- a thruple. Um, an incestuous thruple. Yes. So at some point you must have said, I want this to be a real band, though. Uh Right? <laughs> I don't think it was ever like... So we never thought, like... Suddenly one day it's It like, always yeah, seemed pretty real to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it did. It, it always... Of course it was But I mean just where it's I mean, like this is... Like you're in this... But like like you no, are in this got, band. No, we were young and foolish and just got swept along and kept... Do, I mean, you know, just doing what was great and fun and adventurous right. and... But I think I, if I get what Tom is, is saying, I think with Girl Positive... Are you that, mansplaining? Sorry. <laughs> just go ahead. No, no, I was just a joke. Well, look, Come I'm going to uh, let me just say what he's trying to say. Is what John is trying to say. Are you is, John's planning? I'm John's planning now. Oh, he's Tom's planning. Tom's planning. <laughs> look, what John's trying to say is with Girl Positive, it was. Uh, no, you go ahead, John. I think you can do it. <laughs> this <laughs> no. is good. <laughs> this, this Who is, can tell yeah. us what was being said? Uh, no, you know, I, pl- I, I think we just. Um, I don't think there was that much like, like what is this going to be? Or, you know, we weren't really uh, coming up with a master plan of any sort. It was just, you know, the next logical step came and mm-hmm. we did it. And there was no kind of like, yeah, you're just kids in a band. You're just doing the next thing. Mm-hmm. We were having a good time. It wasn't that we had some, you know, uh, strategy or master plan for world domination. Yeah. Now we do. Yeah. Now you do. Yeah. Yes. Now you do. When it's all, yeah, it's, it's too like, late. Yeah, it's like, it's like too little, too late. Yeah. Damn it! Am, am I sure I want to be in charge of this world? <laughs> like, so somebody's got to take charge. So yeah. So then the so the band is a, is a, is an endeavor in the '90s, and you guys are super busy because because John, you have the blues explosion going at that point. Because was the Pussy Glore wrap up in like 1990, probably somewhere yeah, around about, there. Yeah, around there. Then shortly after that, the blues explosion get started so now you're you're both in bands and you both have the thing going and then but to kind of like bands go away every we see bands go away all the time and they just 
and they usually go away so quietly too. It's usually not some big explosive farewell. It's like there's no show at Madison Square Garden. Yes, exactly. <laughs> For example, it'll be a thing where it'll be like, "Oh wait, what happened to that band?" And then you're just like, "I guess they're maybe not a band anymore." And yeah. then. So then being away for like when you start getting into that stretch where it's like five years, six years, it's like, did you did you think it was going to come back at some point? Yes. So you always felt at some point Boss Hog is coming back. Yes. And I I the part in there that you're missing is that we had a child. So that was um, something that. Uh, you know, kept me specifically away from doing anything. You know, that was my primary responsibility and what I wanted to be doing, not just responsibility, but desire. Mm -hmm. So um, I did that for a while, but uh, I knew, I knew that at the end he would, you know, as children do fledge. (laughs) And, uh, and so I was expecting fully at that time to be able to come back and, and record a record. And it, it worked out perfectly. You know, there was things going on in everybody's life that sort of led to the moment when we were all ready to come back and do it. And so it was not forced or like, you know, on anybody's clock or it just kind of happened that as the best thing about boss hog is that it's not, nobody's, um, you know, saying we got to do this and then, then, you know, then and fit this next thing in and do a record by this date. And it just sort of all happens very naturally and very easily. Mm-hmm. And it's all fun and adventure. Yes. And the, so when it was time, it was time. Correct. And then when it was, did, did the yes, songs, did you, were you always working on ideas and things for that whole time? Or were you just I mean, like, I'd write down stuff, but not really, not, um, you know, we write together as a band. So. When it came time to write the music, we just started getting together. And really what what made that happen was that uh, our keyboard player, who we used for Whiteout, moved to the West Coast. And so we were offered a bunch of shows. You know, every couple years we'd be offered some anniversary gig or, you know, some nice little tour in Italy or something. And we would do that. And uh, so we ended up having to look for another keyboard player. And we found Mickey Finn. And Mickey Finn... um, was really, I think, instrumental in getting us to sort of be a lot more uh, routinely routinely rehearsing. And so he, I guess he wanted to learn what was going on, and it was fun, and it, he kind of brought a new energy to it because as a new member does, mm-hmm. and, you know, he was very good at um, cataloging everything that we were writing, which up until that point we had always done on cassette tapes. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, then he like, introduced us to space. the digital age. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, you know, that technology had come along, not that we didn't have it. I mean, you know, we didn't have it before. It's not mm-hmm. that we didn't use it. It's just that it hadn't been there. So uh, that coincided with Mickey Finn joining the band. And then, like, all of a sudden we found ourselves with hundreds and hundreds of hours of, you know, bits and pieces of songs mm-hmm. that were really good. And that's when we did, thought, okay, well, we should Let the new out. guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort through the 500 yes. hours. Do the tapes. fucking homework. Oh, sorry. <laughs> homework. That's all right. Look, you caught it <laughs> early. We, we, the circle. We really like what you're laying down on the keyboards, <laughs> yes. but if you want, if you really, if you Can want that, catalog that, if you want that space and... in Boss Hog, if you want the job, yes. you got to go through all these 1,500 hours of tapes. Hours. <laughs> pick <laughs> out the pick out the best stuff. The new the person, choice bits. And they're always excited to do it. The new uh, person's always. He like, was. Like, and hey, he... would you guys mind if I went through? All this stuff and started pulling stuff Sucker, together. And you're just yeah. like, sure, I guess we can let you uh, do that. Oh, you have to make them make it seem like you're doing them a favor yeah. to do it. So when did Mickey start playing with us? It was I guess two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Two thousand eight. I think his so first show was been a, a long, legendary show. Several in years, you know, of of you know, of writing and mm-hmm. and just doing whatever Snacking. we do. Yeah, leading sure. up to Brudex and. <laughs> but it's here now. Right. And was it Our kind lives. of a strange thing to just be like, we're back. <laughs> is it weird to just suddenly, because it, it's. It is. No, people are like, well, what different. were you doing? So I get tired of saying, well, I had a child. Mm-hmm. And, um, but, you know. And it's also a so different what? world that you come back to now. You're kind of like. Completely different. Like the doors open and you're yeah. like, we're back. And then like, you don't recognize anything that's outside the, like the space capsule. Saying that for the nerds and the audience <laughs> can now. Sometimes that's the only way they can relate to things. It's a spaceship. 
<laughs> and landed. <laughs> and it's like. So is that your demographic? It runs pretty close <laughs> to that. You're skewing pretty hard to Look, that. There's a Doctor Who robe out there and a sonic That's screwdriver. John's no way. Show. Oh, oh, I'll be right back. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't worry. He'll come in wearing it. If, you, if your goal was to see this Jason. This is one of the biggest fights in our house because John grew up watching Doctor Who, but I'm a Star Trek nerd. So. Okay. I really am against Doctor Who because their science is not good. They have really, really... Well, there's no science. Wait, well, they pretend to have science, which is even worse because they just make it up as the, they'll change the time-space continuum thing to like, oh, you can't ever meet yourself, to, oh, well, he met himself. Uh, like, you yeah. know, this is not good. For I do not... You I, can't just change the rules as you yes. go along to suit the episode narrative. You so know? you're a big Doctor Who fan. Apparently, I've been told. I was told by more than one person. Someone also told me, you know, John's a huge Doctor Who fan. Yeah. <laughs> so Not proud, but no, you are proud of it. You love that. Was that a thing? Doctor from, Who and I think all of his Doctor companions. Who, it always feels like Saturday afternoon, like six at night, it would be on like Channel 13. <laughs> They would run like Doctor Who. Well, where did you grow up? Because this is, New I think, a, yeah. Oh, okay. Jersey. So you maybe, would... was that New, New Jersey and North, I think? Well, I don't Just believe New, we the, had that in D.C. Whatever Channel 13 is called, WNET or mm -hmm. whatever. They would just run Doctor Who on early on Saturday nights. It would just be like, and I was just so much into like stuff. I would just be like, I don't think I'm exactly into this, but it's on. <laughs> And I think I'm going to like watch. There weren't so many. There weren't as many choices no. back then. You, ex yeah, mm. that's. Wait. So who's your favorite doctor? I guess the only one I liked was Tom Baker. Yes, that's the only like, one. Because I really didn't like watch it. I really didn't watch it. I and I tried watching the new ones, and then I'm just like, I don't oh, know. Oh, the new doctors who did you? Yeah. You know, well. I'm very excited. I might actually watch the coming season because the final doctor is going to be a lady. That's true. The not the final doctor. Oh, it's not? I thought it was the 13th. Bill. No? No, they already... They already they blew already that science? Yeah. <laughs> See? What? They're already God! in loopholes. No! <laughs> yes. See, of course. It just, you, you know... You think... No. In what no. universe would they just be like, look, guys, <laughs> we wish we could keep this series, going. but... No. We wish more than anything we'll we could keep Doctor Who. the laws yeah. of science. But someone in 1961 the said there were only 13 of these. <laughs> yeah. Throw it out. No. So, so you, who's your favorite doctor, John? <laughs> doctor John. Yes. He would be a good Doctor Who, right? A little slower, right? <laughs> maybe a little. What? what? He maybe oh. take a piano break every once in a while. Yeah. Doctor Who, Doctor John. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like yes. David Tennant. You like David Tennant? He's. Mm -hmm. I like and oh, I like all the new doctors. You really, like Peter Capaldi because they're the only ones I watch. I didn't like Peter Capaldi as much. John really liked him, but I did not like him as much. So, who's your all-time favorite doctor? Then? But I, don't, I really don't watch his show. Um, probably Tom Baker because that's, that's the one I grew the up with. Only one anyone can name. The can you name them all? <laughs> Wait, I want to know. <laughs> There's <laughs> the guy. My favorite. I think I want my favorite. I loves Tom Baker. I want my favorite to be the sixth one who wore like a <laughs> rainbow the jacket. Most horrendous outfit. And everyone is just like. Oh, yeah, the oh, outfit's this, a whole other conversation. We don't acknowledge that. Like, all right, how about favorite companion? Sorry to. to uh, <laughs> The dog, <laughs> canine. <laughs> dog. <laughs> that, Amy Pond, yeah. hands down. I, but I didn't watch the old shows, so I don't know. I'm only referencing the new shows that John tortures me. I torture him by making him watch Game of Thrones occasionally, and I have to watch Doctor Who. So you watch Doctor Who, and you watch Game of Thrones. So you, I don't watch Game of Thrones or Doctor Who. <laughs> My Wait. wife watches Game of Thrones. Terry loves Doc, yeah. uh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is pretty, well, pretty yes. awesome. And she was, I'll hear her in the other room screaming. <laughs> that happens at our house. Yes. And then I'll be laughing. Yeah. I watch bad. I don't, what do you watch? I don't know. I started Come on, watching. What's your this, story? What did I start watching? I was watching the show Crisley Knows Best. <laughs> Wait a second. I think I've seen a commercial for that. Are you you're not serious? I started watching it like a week because I was so <laughs> fascinated by it. I don't understand what the Good show Lord. is. Lord. <laughs> because now he has a talk show, and I'm like, like, how is this guy going to have a talk show? John isn't. No, I. Does he wear a scarf? He's um, the 
um, correct me if I'm wrong, but he's the, um, how do I put this politely? <laughs> I'm not even going to try. He's uh, a family man. He's a, he's a southern family, family man. man. Who And then everybody who watches. Gay. Yeah, and it's like it just seems like you're just not sure what's going on. Because yeah. he certainly seems. He seems very effeminate. And you're just not sure, but he's got like five kids. and What channel is on? Oh, USA Network, the Finest home of channel. everyone's favorite <laughs> reality shows. Right. No, I'm just fascinated by this guy because he's going to have a talk show now. And that, to me, whenever anybody has a talk show, that is, that's like, I, I love watching talk shows kind of flame out. Whether it was like when when Chevy Chase had his talk show. Oh. And Magic, Magic Johnson had his talk show. And Pat Sajak. And I just, I feel like this, I you hit that, had, had you hit, the hall of highlights. Yeah. I feel like this Todd Chrisley show has a chance to set to move the bar for the first time in decades since since Magic Johnson. Um. So John, you are not just in Boss Hog. The John Spencer Blues Explosion. You had an album come out like a year ago, right? A year and a half ago. A couple of years ago, yeah. yeah. And now, what, what's uh, what, you had an exciting year with Baby Driver? Yeah, it was very exciting. That's like because the opening song in this movie is your song, and it's the whole song. Yeah, they had to play the whole song. They played those like the four minutes, the opening four minutes of the movie. The best, more like five. Five more like five. <laughs> So, well, wait a minute. Not only that, but the whole movie is built around that time. Yeah. And, the, and inspired the entire movie. So The whole premise is established with your song, with Bell Bottoms. And like, how long did you know that was in the, in the making? Uh, the first time I met Edgar Wright, the guy who wrote and directed Baby Driver, um, he mentioned to me that uh, he wanted to use Bell Bottoms for a movie. And... That was maybe around 2005. That's I met Edgar around the release of mm-hmm. Shaun of the Dead. Okay. So now you're just waiting for him to get to this thing finally. I, about three or four years ago was when they, it, it, I think that's when Baby Driver began to ramp up into production. They, because the entire movie's uh, written around and, and set to and choreographed to all the music, mm-hmm. they had to clear the rights well in advance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So So you knew it was happening because yeah. you knew that it had been. It had been cleared. Yeah. John's also in it. Did you see it? I did. Mm-hmm. I saw it. I you sat remember? next to you we when I saw it. Uh, oh, we that's right. Oh, New shit. York oh, you're right. I'm so there sorry. You go. That's the third that's one. Like, what the hell? You're absolutely right. I sat right next to you. I you watched. Did. You kindly was, sat next to us. You had better seats than we did. But it's a movie theater. It's not like it was a contest. It's not like it's better seats. Or yes, like, no. It is a like, contest. <laughs> you're wrong. It is a contest. Right. You had better seats. So when you than go to the us. cinema, you just show up right before the movie I starts. Go right to the front row. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's that not I the won. best seat. That means I won. <laughs> if I'm in the front row. That means I win, and I turn back, and I don't. I always seem to win and when you, I go to the movies. And you hit that vape, and I have vape, you and my start. cloud goes up and blocks <laughs> everyone. I say to the person next to me, "You mind if I vape?" If somebody said that to you at the movies, do you mind if I do either of you vape? I'm going to say no. I'm what's what's say. the old Steve Martin joke? Um, I <laughs> <laughs> mind if I fart? Yeah. <laughs> Did you listen to those albums? Oh hell yeah! I had the the poster, "Best Fishes." Because this is another. This is what I want to get to. A thing. <laughs> You go through your whole career. You got Pussy Galore, the scariest band going, right? Every all all this the mean scary. faces. No, but look, it's just on the surface. You look at the okay, cover. Yes, Everybody's mean, scowling. True. It's one true. one person scowling harder than the next. Worked. <laughs> I thought the whole. I thought I've always thought that your body of work is so funny, has so much humor in it. The 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 you gung, right, right. Yeah. That's one of the. That's like one of the funniest, most exciting things ever. It's like it's exciting. It's got the best guitar sounds I've ever heard. Thanks. But it's also funny. Like you can't believe how like there's such a sense of humor running underneath it. It's not like it's. A, it's look. It's not like you're a king. It's making a king missile record. It's not like that kind of humor. No, it was Please never. Please don't groan. In the, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm not. 
I'm kidding. You can groan all height. <laughs> no. But I'm saying it's not that kind of humor. It's not like you're doing the comedy songs. But there was always a wit about the whole thing that I think maybe people didn't always pick up on. Or they picked up on it and, and took it the wrong way. And mm-hmm. so it's it's been a bit of a, a stumbling block for, for some uh, listeners and and. and you know, I think I, what I always try to do is, is describe it as as a sense of play or a, a mm-hmm. sense of joy, mm-hmm. um, because no, it's it's not it's not a Perry record or it's not meant to be a, you know piss take or yeah no we're not making comedy albums but there is a you know I think for for me a rock and roll is 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 really a, 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 you know it's it's a, a an affirmation of life in some way and uh, yeah know, it's like. Like on Dial M, when the bleeps are missing the curses on that, that's like one of the, I think that's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. <laughs> it's the idea of putting bleeps in, but the curses, the bleeps are just getting everything but the curses. It's like, it's exciting though. It's exciting. It's, it's like all, it's energy. And sometimes it's, it's funny and it, sometimes there's a sense of humor to it. And sometimes there's a sense of, of, of just scariness or menace or whatever, but it all adds up. It wasn't just menace and scowling is all what I guess I'm trying to say. Is that fair? It's very fair. A plus. Thank you. Finally, I'm vindicated. <laughs> we'll have to have you interviewed for the documentary. The documentary? He understood. Where's, this, where's the big pussy glore box set? Why is there not just some ten? What do you want? Box set? To, but I mean, what well, are you missing? There's got to be live stuff you guys had, live shows. Not really. No, I mean, there's there's a lot of cas- a lot of cassettes, cassettes. Uh, stuff. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you really want to? So, Mickey Finn wasn't there. Yeah. Look, so. Mickey, I have a I have a milk crate full of cassettes. Yeah, you've got uh, a milk crate full. Of, what are they? Rehearsals and yeah. things. Some and, rehearsals. I ta- and I used to tape. I uh, uh, probably for the first. Two or three years of the band, I re- pr- recorded every show, mm-hmm. and listened back to it in the van the next day, and scolded everybody for playing the wrong. Parts. Were you finding the van? And then finally, one day, you're like, "Look, Christina, I love you. That's it. You're out. Get out of the van." <laughs> no. So, but would they put that, wouldn't that be the greatest box set of the live stuff? Pussy Galore Live, ten shows. <laughs> I would want to hear that. Okay. I would want to hear that. Well, maybe you can... Uh, I'd like to hear that. Anybody wants to get in touch with yeah, me? Yeah, if you have... Uh, are really excited about Write to John Spencer, process. care of the best show. <laughs> yes. Sure. Okay. I got a lot of free time. I Catalog yeah. this stuff. Right. Come up with some put, art. Put someone to work on that. There's some clown who would digitize that stuff for you. they pay yeah. you to do it. A nice intern. Right. Young just, intern somewhere. Yes. I just feel like... You said this place is empty the other six days of the week. <laughs> yeah, why don't you, we'll get them to come here. We'll put some kid here this with like your the, milk crate. The Pussy Glore sweatshop. <laughs> yes, with a milk crate. Start digitizing. Get that pussy sweat going. And you can't leave until it's done. So, so what? What's the what's the, so? What do you think the 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 Boss Hog run is going to be now for this uh, for this uh, version of the band and this album? <laughs> I mean, are you going to do, are you going to, you're That's doing these couple segue. shows this um, this week? Yes, we're doing a couple shows this weekend. We have a two-week tour in Europe. I, I understand you have listeners abroad. Everywhere. Um, and some a, lady listeners yes, as well. That was there's the joke. Thank you, John. <laughs> there's, well, Come I heard on. that there's one <laughs> out there. No, there's a lot of ladies who listen to this show. Uh-huh. All fans of... Doctor Who? No. No. Well, they like <laughs> Doctor Who. Probably not. Probably not. There are going to be Star Trek ladies, maybe. There's plenty of Star Trek ladies. Mm-hmm. Perhaps some Game of Thrones ladies. Yes, and they, I hope, and look, is this, you're not throwing a challenge out for people to show up in <laughs> costumes. Oh, yes, I am. These Boss Hog shows. <laughs> please, this please do. like a veil. Yeah. That would make me so happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, suddenly you looked out. And it was just saw a million Daenerys in the crowd. <laughs> Mother of Dragons to my show. <laughs> look, I feel like that's a challenge I now. Know. True. It'll be like uh you look you have to be careful what you wish for though. <laughs> Suddenly people start yelling before you Shame. know you're, you're playing Shame. the Game of Thrones theme. <laughs> like you're working then you're playing Star Trek themes. Yeah. You're like, Well, I guess we can't play anything off the new album. We gotta 
do this we Doctor actually, Who do have, suite. I, I, we have Star Trek sounds in and also Star Wars sounds on that Brood Star EP and that we play live. Okay. So you're so you're <laughs> okay. you're already catering okay. to these people. <laughs> okay. You're already aiming it at the nerds. <laughs> you're gonna look out in Asbury Park. You're gonna nerds see are some, our people. You're gonna see some C three POs, <laughs> you'll see a few <laughs> There is a full size R two D two here. Yes, cooler. If you saw gift of Terry, thank you. Terry, Terry, pick that out for me. See another cool, awesome chick. Yeah, I know. I married to her. (laughs) I'm fully aware. She's the coolest. So you're gonna look out. What's her uh, cosplay outfit? I don't know. I don't know what she would show up as. I don't know. I'll, 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 you, you just, she'll surprise <laughs> that is you. That's the challenge. She'll surprise you. On Saturday. The Wonder Wheel. Or what's yeah. it called? The, the Wonder the, Bar. The Wonder, Wonder Bar. Bar. <laughs> yes. You're going to look out and you're just going to be like, oh, I guess we're actually doing a show for a room full of people in costumes now. <laughs> that and would be great. That would be great. It really would be. And then you'll start getting booked at Comic Con. Uh, right? I've always wanted to Why go. Not? I think You've we went. When, yeah, we went when your our friend Paul Pope was here at the Javits Center. Not the, but I don't know what that's called. Oh, that's not. That's that? New York Comic Con. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> sorry. <NYCC. laughs> Look. All right, I'm not that level of nerd. I got to level up for sure. It's the Javits Center. This doesn't take. This is not. This is not super inside. The Javits Center sells out every year. You can't get in. Yeah. I've been to that thing. It's terrifying. <laughs> they all scare me. Every Comic Con scares me now, because you just have people in costumes where their limited their vision is limited. So, are you going True. to appear on a panel? I will be on a panel at this year's. Oh, what panel? Yes, I will be on the Steven Universe panel, which is a cartoon I do a voice on. <gasps> oh, yes. So I will be. Attention, you, Comic Con! Could you please what, do what voice some of the it? voice here? here? I'm yeah. pretty much doing it right now. <laughs> that's it. That's what, that's know, what Steven right? Universe sounds like. Well, his dad, Greg. Greg well, what's, Universe. Okay, what's something his dad would say? Steven. He would say Steven. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> and what 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 channel is that on? Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network. It's a very popular show. Okay. <laughs> They're going to have a panel. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Look. But so, what were when you were besides Doctor Who at the pressing mm-hmm. hour of six p.m.? Did you have sure. what were your other, what, were your, what, were, what like what was your I, I, daily afternoon after school? Did you have Count Gore Duvall here? After school, I would generally hide from bullies, <laughs> <laughs> try to get home without getting beat up, go home, and they picked on me. I got picked really? on. Really? How many times in, did you get beat up? Oh. We got picked on when I was a we? freshman in high school. Me and my group of loser friends in high school, and I hear Mike so laughing. Why didn't you and the rest of the Mike. misfit toys get together and, and, and yeah, fight back? Fight. Because the, because it wasn't like there was one bully. There was ten of them also. How, how many? Of, how, many of, to, how many? How many? not. Uh, did that happen to you, John? And uh, you, uh, uh, oh, I don't know about uh-oh. that. That uh, <laughs> sounded very telling. I know. <laughs> In, in my family, there's famous stories about uh, but th- kind of this kind of stuff happening to my older brother. That's why I was going, ah, because I don't really uh, want to yeah. get into telling this long story about my older brother. Well, look, <clears throat> they He's would pick on nice us. Man. They picked on us. There were probably, how many of us were there? There was probably like five of us. And how many of them were there? It's like it's uh, it's probably like <laughs> the foot. How many people are on a high school football team? Because that's who. How many were there were of them? Do you know the answer? I don't. I just know that so, it didn't. So that's take... how nerdy this show is. There was a nobody point. can say how many p- people are on a football team. Here's one for <laughs> you. Here's one for you. Look, I watch Hard Knocks. I could talk to cutting it down to the final fifty-three, right? Fifty-three. I don't know what any of that meant. There's an HBO show called Hard Knocks oh. where it's the preseason of a of an NFL team, and they they have like all cameras everywhere, and they're capturing what it's like for the preseason to take shape and they have to cut people and tell them thanks but no thanks and you watch people's dreams just die on camera as they as the coach just says like no is there a robotic dog in it (laughs) there is no robotic dog is there a cute assistant fuck that there we go you're on the books 
<laughs> There's a new show now. Apparently, Andrew Dice Clay <laughs> called a few weeks ago. No joke. Really? He called in. Kevin Corrigan was here. Do you know Kevin? Yeah, I've seen that show. It's on Showtime, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. But Kevin came by. Is he nice? Andrew Dice Clay? No. Kevin? The other guy. Kevin? Yeah. He's the sweetest guy ever. He's, okay. he's, he's great. Not a bully. And he got his friend Andrew Dice Clay to call. And then Maybe he called. a bully. And did Andrew Dice Clay bully you? He was a bully. He didn't bully me. I'm going to say he was not a bully. He seems like he was almost more of like a theater guy. In just He wanted right. to just so be where on stage. He, right. But he called and he was talking and having a good time. And then he, then he went into a... Then he... It's like he almost felt he had to become Andrew Dice Clay... And then did like a five minute, it felt like five minutes, it might have probably like 15 seconds. What, with all the nursery rhymes <laughs> all and everything? Stuff. He just went on a tirade of a thing. It was, it was very funny and I didn't know what to oh. do with it. Wait, I can't do it. Oh. So in oh. high school, oh. this is what happened in high school. One day, we're all hiding in the library at lunch, me and my friends. And I hear him laughing. I hear Mike. He loves when I tell stories about me Do you guys know each other from high school? Up. Me and Mike? No, he just loves. Oh. He's laughing because he loves me telling stories about me getting picked on. <laughs> then, well, who doesn't? <laughs> me. I don't. I'm not particularly fond of these stories. But you're so, going to tell it. So then they, went, they found us in the library. And they were like, you guys better get out of the library and come out to the football field or you're going to get it. This is like, really? I can't believe this oh, actually this, this happened. happened. This yeah. sounds like an after school special. It, yeah, I lived it. And then they're like, all right, you guys are going to race each other. <laughs> and God. why on God's oh, earth no. would you A, go and B, do what they asked well, you to do? Well, because what they did to a kid a week earlier, one of our friends was, he was at the, he was at the A&P. <laughs> <laughs> and they caught him in the parking lot. Uh-huh. And they made him dance on the shopping carts, like all the, you know, when they put all the shopping carts together in front of the store that you can pull your cart out. Mm-hmm. And he was dancing on it, and then he got off, they, he tried to get off the carts early, and then someone did like a, a karate. You ever, this is kids like they <laughs> yeah. know a little bit of martial arts, right. and they use them for like evil purposes. Yes. Uh-huh. Did they so have nunchucks on them did, as well? They, like they, they probably had throwing <laughs> stars and nunchucks. This kid did a spin kick and kicked my friend in the throat. So everybody what? was just like, oh, these guys aren't messing How around. Old are you? How old are you? This is freshman year. I'm freshman 14. Year, 14 years old. So then. Boys. So now, yeah, when they say come out and run on the field, we come out for the race. We better get out there. I don't want to get kicked in the throat. Oh, my God. So we get out there. They line us up. And I'm saying to myself, I'm going to win this race. I don't care what it takes. <laughs> I ran. I won the. I ran from one end of the thing to the other. I won, and they're like, "All right, you're in the next round. You won." Like, Wait, oh. doesn't that excuse me? Wait, I I made it to the next round because like you're gonna let the kids who lost out of the. Ro- oh, and then thankfully the I, th- I think probably the vice principal pulled up in his. Do you remember any of their names? I don't. Oh, it's too bad. I don't. I wouldn't want to. Look, I don't know where they are. I hope they're Isn't all. Isn't that what Facebook is for? I, I quit Facebook a few years ago. It was the best thing I ever did <laughs> was quit Facebook. And then I quit Twitter about a month and a half ago. Oh, I nice. love it. Those guys out there, they just tweet out like things that are going on with the show. I'm just not on it anymore. I couldn't do it. So I don't want to know what these bullies, they, they might pick it back up. Think, they might just be yeah. like, all right, let's, we don't know who won that. Right. Did you ever go to your high school reunion? <laughs> No, I don't want anything to do with any of it. You didn't graduate? <laughs> oh, I barely graduated. Oh, I was the worst. Student. I think I finished second from the bottom in my class. I was so dumb. <laughs> so dumb. Now, now. It is. Oh, no. It just means you didn't like school. No, I liked. Dumb. Well, I didn't like school. I liked <laughs> reading books. <laughs> But I was so dumb. I was so bad at school. Yeah, school sucks. Dumb oh. or just not motivated or not into it? All of it. No, I was like... I don't think you should equate the two. Only speaking as a mother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do, you, do you still think of yourself as dumb? Sorry. I think of myself more, and I, I talked about this a little bit last week, so I, I think of myself more as crafty than smart. Not unlike Bugs Bunny. <laughs> so is, is Bugs Bunny a homosexual? No. I, 
I knew you were going to take it there. I don't think so. I think no. Bugs Bunny. We, no, we, just because this came up we, with a, with a friend yeah. recently. Okay, well, what Bugs right. Bunny will do when he when somebody cross dresses an awful yes, lot? Sure, but I don't think that. Well, anyway, but I think why are we like, assigning sexuality to a cartoon? Thanks. Thank you, Christina. What he's doing is he's mentally dismantling his foe. It's like he's almost like doing CIA so techniques. Why didn't you yes. do some of that Bugs Bunny CIA shit with the bullies? Ninja. Um, you just weren't there. I wasn't there yet. Yeah. <laughs> I was so speaking of Bugs Bunny, so you come home after getting the business from the bullies, you turn yeah. on the TV. Yeah, and probably watch... Uh, Happy Days. I I, no. Yeah, I, would, I liked like, a lot of shows like that. I Happy did Days, like, yeah. Like all of those shows were on yeah. after school. Happy Days. Watch Happy Days. I uh, watch, Laverne uh, and Shirley. Uh, Alice. Joni and Chachi. After school? Alice. What? How old are you people? Reruns. I watch reruns. <laughs> Rerun and what was what's that happening? show? What's happening? I liked What's Happening a whole yeah. lot. Yeah. What? Where I grew up, it was all the, it was like, you know, Genie, Munster, oh, yeah, uh-huh. Genie Star Trek. It was the, That's true. You know, the stuff that was in syndication was, was from. So, yeah. So, you had the. You, <laughs> you guys grew up in the fancy neighborhood. <laughs> yes. With the fancy <laughs> neighborhood. With the, with the, the I had fancy three reruns. channels. <laughs> yeah. We had the fancy reruns while you had your. That's true. We had the lowly Munsters. Monsters Adam's, oh, this is another big one at our house. Uh, mm-hmm. Munsters or Adam's Family. I would go with the Munsters. You would be on John's Why? team. Okay. I think because the, the, it's it's it feels less kind of like, I think it's Star Wars versus Star Trek in exactly. a way you can well, say. Well, no, 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 because I like both of those solidly. Okay. So I think it's Star Trek versus Doctor Who. Well, I would okay. <laughs> I would say... I think there's something, there's something, there's bad puns on the Adams family. It always feel kind of like groaners would just like, that I was But it was not. more gothy. Yeah. And there's also the idea of a house with a, were- a vampire Wednesday and a Adams Frankenstein. Wednesday Adams a hero, though, like, you know, and Morticia. For the ladies, I think it was more about, I, although I like the cousin, the normal cousin was hilarious. Marilyn. Marilyn, yes. yeah. Well, how about, I, little there's. Eddie. Well, I guess I Dream of Genie and Bewitched is also another debate. Those were, which, yeah. Those were but all. I think that would have to be Bewitched, though, right? Bewitched. Because then you can... I mean, I, I, I'm not even going to go into it. You've got to go into Genie. this now. I'm not. I don't no. want to. Nope, She's I don't got want a whole to. fetish. I have a whole uh, fetish this thing about I Dream of Genie because it was mm-hmm. that, that bottle that she lived in was nut so. It looks very comfortable in that bottle. It doesn't. Plus it also looks whole... very like Sex Denny. To mm-hmm. me, so and as a child, I was like, "What's happening there? Mm-hmm. What happens yes. in the bottle?" I was very confused mm-hmm. by that. But then, meanwhile, you have on Bewitched, you have <laughs> uh, Agnes Moorhead, yes, and uh, Paul Lynn, oh, Doctor Bombay, she'd always Doctor Bombay, yeah. yeah. And then you also had uh, Elizabeth Montgomery with where she would do uh, her evil uh, cousin Serena? Serena, yes, yes. The Which evil was the greatest. Witch. She was the greatest. Yes, and another she, one of the very good, like blonde brunette. Mm-hmm. More because she did the uh, she did that song uh, the, with Boyce and Hart wrote that song that she did "Blow You a Kiss in the Wind" that Red Cross did on one of their on Teen Babes from Monsanto. I did not know that they covered the song from Bewitched. Oh. Because Boyce and Hart wanted an episode of Bewitched, where mm-hmm. I think Serena wanted to be famous, and she made Boyce and Hart appear suddenly. The guys who wrote Last Train to Clarksville now were summoned. <laughs> they suddenly <laughs> went and suddenly... What a just, treat for the studio yeah, audience. It's like, like, hey, you know the monkeys. These are the we guys get to who see wrote Davy those. Jones? <laughs> yes. no, no, you get to, This is even better. Two these guys are the guys from, that wrote the song. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't put these guys on the monkeys because they are not very camera friendly, but <laughs> we're going to have them on Bewitched tonight. The monkeys were on too. Another good show. Yes. After, Watch after the monkeys, and I want to say this about the monkeys. That's a, oh my goodness, what a, what a, 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 a transition that is. A segue. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Difficult people this week. My friend Julie Klausner. I, I got to work on the show, and and uh, the episode that just came out today, Mickey Dolan's. No. That is on the episode. Wow. It is so funny. It is so funny. Mickey Dolan's is on it. Pat Oswalt's on it. John Benjamin's on it. It's one of the best episodes of the season. 
It is Mickey Dolan's. This is a tour de force with from Mickey Dolan's. I'm not kidding. If you want to see Mickey Dolan's, go for it. This is you should watch the new episode of Difficult People, which is on Hulu. So is it on regular TV? No, just Hulu. Just Hulu. Just Hulu. So what did you do for the season? I wrote. You wrote. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to write. And this episode is maybe my favorite of the season. So, so well, what's, we, what? we ran into you at that. Uh, yeah. You introduced that's right. it to us. And to it was actually the... Julie's seats, right, that were better. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> Please. You that's think just, I was invited to that thing? <laughs> no. I only got in because Julie was like, hey, you want to go to the movie with me? Like, yes, please. <laughs> I would have been outside that with like an autograph book being like, baby driver, please sign my autograph book. I'm not sure what the guy's name is. Please, baby driver. Ansel Elgort. Yes. He's a very handsome guy walking around. You always, it's funny when you see like an actor like that, uh, like a young actor, you're just like, oh, you're an actor. Yeah. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> a human being almost at this point you're like so what's what, what what what's what's coming up next after the the european tour and everything are you gonna yeah we're big in germany are you gonna be in germany <laughs> no, just kidding. No, okay um so yes uh after that we have no plans <laughs> okay <laughs> we're well we're starting to write again so that's the we never have a plan. Yeah, we're hoping we're hoping this, this <laughs> we'll offer will come some through. Probably more tours. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're hoping an offer will come through to, to uh, take a trip to Australia, New Zealand, and Japan in January. In okay. January. All, All right. right. So, and then you start woodshedding again. Oh, we've already started. We've already started. Okay. We're constantly doing. All right. that. In and fact, a bunch it's hard of wood to keep this to regular rehearsal. It's more fun to play new stuff than to. And then is it blues explosion uh, in the in the future here? Is that a thing? I uh, I don't think so. No. <laughs> mm, not, sorry. Not now. No? Not for now. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's fine. Look, it's boss hog time now. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Don't make it sixteen more years. Nope, that's yeah. not going to happen. But also, can we say what else is happening? Uh, sure. What else? I'm, I'm going to say yes. Oh. <laughs> you can. <laughs> You've uh, been outvoted. Yeah. Well, uh, you're going to go record some stuff on your own. Mm. Yeah. All right. That's great. Um, yeah. I think that's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> With a <laughs> robot dog. <laughs> With a robot dog. It'll be your... It will have robots and John. Yeah. It'll be you, canine. <laughs> You'll be like with... It, will, uh, it actually will be robots. All yeah. Sorts of you go get those Chuck E. Cheese, those robots uh, that they're throwing out now from all the... Like they're pulling Oh, yeah, the, the animatronic yeah. things. Yeah, that's sad. I heard that people have been collecting those and then they program them to play their own punk rock songs. Yeah. So you can get the Chuck E. Cheese characters doing Boss Hog song. That would be so amazing. Yes. So, so if anyone... Has one. If anyone wants to bring their animatronic... <laughs> You might want to clear it with the venue beforehand. No, don't, they do, they're don't selling just, them off. They don't have any rights to them. But just don't bring them to the show. Like somebody's going to be like, yeah, these things are oh, no, 400 I meant pounds here. each. I meant here. Like you'll be just like no, outside here, the show. Bring, bring, it, bring the it to the Wonder Bar. Galore at the Pussy bring, Galore Oh, yeah, the Pussy sweatshop. Galore Sweatshop. Dress them like Pussy Galore. That's what will That's, bring Pussy Galore back is we'll have yep. Chuck E. Cheese animatronics playing Pussy Galore box All sets. the hits. That would be. Yes. Die, Rich. bitch. See? Full circle. Fuck you, man. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Pussy you stomp. You happy, Mike? <laughs> you look like a Jew. <laughs> you happy, Mike? Mike loves it when people... Because I try to keep... I try to say it's the a hard... I try to say it's a hard G. It's a hard G. There's... Uh, now Mike just uh, passed uh, out. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, All the Pussy Galore hits. All the hits. All well, the you hits. Get the box Performed set by animatronic animals. Jesse the box set? Characters. Is it so wrong to ask for a box set? I see some... I go, I see some of the box sets. <laughs> Billy Joel. I'll bring you a milk Billy, crate set of cassette Billy Joel. Tapes. Ten the discs digits, of Billy the Joel 21st stuff. 21st century. Well, Billy, yeah. I guess they're, it's coming back, cassettes. Yeah. People are into cassettes sure. now again. Why? I don't know. Because they didn't actually... Have to Grow deal up, with right, them when they were actually the only option. You know what the sad thing that's missing from cassettes is the mixtape. That's one of, uh, and I'll tell you a nice story. One of the first things that um, on our, our, maybe the second time I met you, John drove with Julie in, in the Pussy Galore Mobile, the rabbit, over to my apartment 
didn't come in, just rang the bell and thrust a cassette tape in my hand and left. Like maybe said like two words and that was a mix. That was a mixtape moment. So that mm-hmm. that is gone. Is gone. Well, kids are doing that again. And I think no. I said to you, you have to race. <laughs> You gotta go out to the, the football playground. field. There's you gonna and be a Julie race. are gonna race. Oh, flashbacks! <laughs> Getting horrible flashbacks <laughs> to my past. No, never again, please. All right, I'm gonna tell everybody. Friday, Skirball Center. <laughs> tell your Badman story. That's <laughs> the worst no. ever flashback. All right. No. Okay. That's for the, the next time. The That's for the next time. Story waits till next time. Did yeah. you have an all right time? Was it okay? Yeah, Hanging I out? enjoyed it a Good. lot. It was Thank fun. Thank you for coming. Yeah, I appreciate it. Us. That was my pleasure. It's exciting to have both of you here. Boss Hog was. You know what's going to be. You know what's going to be exciting. <laughs> what's that? This Friday at the Skirball Center. Oh, well, NYU. Here it, is. here it is. Joshua Light Show. <laughs> Come on. Louder. And then that's Friday, September eighth. Tickets some, are still available. Should put some reverb on your voice you and then it'll be like <laughs> Saturday night, Asbury Park. One night only. At the Wonder Bar. Boss Hog live. With, with special guest, Taiwan Housing Project. And, and Sunshine in the Ring. Your charges. Yes. You produce their record. Yep. Which is a great record. Thanks. Well, thank you both for coming by. Christina. Thank you for having us. John, thank you. It was so much fun. I'm going to play. I'm going to play. Some Red Cross? No, I'm going to play Fear for You. <laughs> oh, on old the school. Way out. Okay. All right. All right.